don't think you find inspiration. I think that it's just a way of being in the world. You just go out there and it's, just, it's a way of, of looking at things and it just sort of happens. It can just sort of hit you. I was born on Lake Superior in Northern Ontario and uh, at the age of seven moved to Geraldton which is an old uh, gold mining town in Northern Ontario, north of there, about 250 miles north of Thunder Bay. And uh, born into a Finnish family and uh, definitely valued the outdoors, nature, did family camping trips and picnics even in the winter and whatnot. So I think that Having that kind of closeness to nature really affected the way I felt in the world. That uh, bigness of the world and the smallness of me being able to walk out to the bridge and stand in the middle of the bridge and actually see the curve of the world, it felt like, um, when you looked at the lake on either side. So I think that that kind of gave me a perspective on myself in the world that I couldn't have received in any other way, I don't think. I went to the Ontario College of Art uh, and did fine arts. The time for me, it was really good because I got a very good classical, formal education. I had color classes and composition classes and painting, figure painting, figure drawing. It really taught me how to paint. It taught me how to see color. It taught me how to see how color functions. So I feel lucky that I got that, but at the same time, once I was sprung, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I, I had been painting the figure. So I knew I didn't want to keep painting the figure. So I was kind of lost for a while. I didn't really know what to do. But I don't necessarily think that's such a bad thing. I mean, you're sent out there and you've got some skills, but you have to figure out, you know, who you are and what you're about. So I went to, um, I went to Kansas. I did my BFA in Kansas in 13 months and uh, with all my transfer credits and whatnot. And uh, basically did some printmaking and ceramics and stuff like that, filling out all those things that I didn't have to do with the fine art um, program at OCA, which was fantastic again. But then I went to Texas and did my MFA at University of Texas at San Antonio, and it was fantastic. It gave me everything that I really needed. It gave me, it was a long program, it was three years, and it gave me the chance to really screw up badly and to prove to myself that I wasn't going to be a Bryce Martin minimalist painter, which I really wanted to be, but I'm not. <laughs> I didn't really want to be a representational painter, but you just, you know, you just have to accept what it is that you are, how it is that you see the world, and, and be who you have to be. And I think really that's what my MFA program did for me. It just made me embrace what I, who I was and, and what I needed to do. It was a fantastic program with uh, visiting, different visiting artists every semester, so I had some, some uh, landscape uh, and representational painters who really, really helped me a lot and really forced me to do a lot of research and to see what was going on in terms of contemporary landscape out there. I still look at my paintings as landscapes. They still are landscapes. But it was a really long journey, really, from those lakes and trees and rocks to the road paintings. And really, it was a matter of trying to just respond to my real environment the series on the ledge behind me are all I-35 in Texas. That's all the commute that I did between um, San Marcos and San Antonio. So those are my first road pieces. I just got a digital camera. I was spending two hours a day almost on the road. And uh, really, th those were good reasons. Those are like the, the intellect being that, oh, this makes sense that I should try to make use of this, but really what happened was I would start to see the same cars on the road. I would see people coming home from work that I would see almost every day, but one day I would see the whole family rush out to greet them or the door open and the dog go running out to meet the person. Or, you know, even when I was late sometimes, I would still pass the same cars on the road. So there were certain things that started to happen where I felt I was sort of, um, had a way to sort of enter into thinking about these people's lives and um, the houses became sort of symbolic about just individual lives that are lived. But then coming back to Toronto was a shock. Um, the houses were also grand in comparison. 
I try not to have anything really grand in my work. I'm trying to make them very commonplace, very um, you know normal sorts of places um, that most anybody from almost anywhere can respond to. So to me, I felt that the big Victorian houses in Toronto were just a little bit too much. So that's when I started painting at night, just in a way to try to level the field a little bit. And then still, like that was, I, I think I found, it, I pushed it to a limit um, again for myself. And so I got in a car and I started looking for places that looked a little bit more like my hometown. I even went, did a trip up there. To, uh, to shoot houses at night, and that's where the whole road thing happened. I just started responding to the actual being on the road a lot more, that sort of place in between um, where you are starting from and where you're going, and just how much time we spend in those places and how that is my landscape. It doesn't seem to matter whether you're from Britain or South Texas or BC, um, everybody's experienced this kind of landscape. It seems to be our, the landscape of our age. Um, I think people have sort of a comfort, a certain kind of comfort within it, but also a certain kind of horror in terms of what it's done, you know, in terms of removing people from each other and sort of dis that whole disassociation of people from um, a, a community. But it sort of ties them together. Everybody is reading the same billboards and looking at the same signage for the same products and uh, you know, really familiar, like sharing the same road. The, the roadway becomes the community that ties people together. So I have an issue with the way cars have taken over people's lives um, and what they've done to communities by creating all these sorts of spaces that are, you know, the, the mall that you have to get in your car and drive all the way out there to the mall. Um, but at the same time, I'm showing, I think, a little bit of the romance of the road, you know, who doesn't love getting in a car and driving at night. So I think that what's interesting about it is that dichotomy of ugly beauty. Everybody hates them, but gee, they look so pretty at night. <laughs> um, so I think that that's really just showing something that's mundane every day in a light that maybe people aren't necessarily uh, looking at it. Being a painter, is a, it's a bit like being a dinosaur in this day and age. It's, uh, there are still all those sort of alchemical things about um, you know, the, how the temperature and the weather affects the paint and the medium and the way it goes on. And um, I do have to sort of work myself up into a bit of a state where it sort of reminds me even of uh, the way a friend of mine talked about writing essays where she just did housework and moved around and did this and that and just all this sort of um, slightly busy but focused and intense stuff that happens building up to the moment where you actually sit down and then you're just completely focused and work. I have a process that has developed over time that really works for me and it's efficient so um, basically what I do is I shoot a bunch of photo references and I accumulate those over years. You don't really know at the time what you're going to get and if you're going to use it or how you're going to use it. I just shoot. If I see something that I feel like I should shoot, I shoot it and it could be years before I actually use it. If ever, I guess, but it's never, I've never looked at rolls of film as wasted. And I even have to tell the processors to just print every single frame. Every time I go into the same places, I have to say print every frame, no matter what. And uh, because it could be, you know, a few little dabs of light on one print that I cut out and use in the periphery of, you know, a, a scene that just needs something. And then I'll do a drawing from that and transfer it to a, uh, a panel. I paint on corrugated aluminum panels right now. And so I'll transfer that and do an underpainting. So that dries overnight and then I'll do the rest of the painting in one sitting. I absolutely enjoy the physicality of painting the, it feels buttery and beautiful and it smells so good and feels really kind of sensuous. 
If you talk to people who are oil painters, they'll talk about the texture of the paint versus other types of paint because it's just not the same. This is sort of the king when it comes to that. And I think it, it goes on smoothly and it mixes smoothly. When you put one brush, brush stroke on top of another of wet paint, it just blends beautifully. The paint goes on better if it's all in one sitting. Painting wet on wet, it's an awful feeling for me and for other painter friends that I've spoken to about it to have to go back in the next day or a couple of days later and paint a wet stroke on top of a dry painting, it just feels really wrong. Wet paint receives wet paint really nicely. It doesn't just sit on top, it gets incorporated. There's, you know, the, the edges are, they mix a little bit and, and it just works together better. It builds as a whole so much better. I paint at night because I get into a different mode of being. Daytime is, is a busy time. The energy is really different. It's just kind of, it's good for running errands and whatnot, but there's a, there's a time of night where I just sort of get into a certain state of being where I'm very focused. The balance between intellect and intuition in my work, uh, I can sit down and have a great idea as to what I want to paint, but that's really got nothing to do with what happens when I sit down and actually start painting. Um, I've had lots of great ideas that just never come to fruition. So it's really all about the act of painting, and I guess that's the intuition. That's where you sort of get into, you know, if things are going great, I almost feel like I'm getting into this totally different state where there's just a, an ease and a flow and things are just happening and um, I'm just working and keeping up with my hand and I think that everything that I've done before goes into, into those moments. The size of my paintings um, are deliberate. It's not because my studio is small, like some people think <laughs> or suggest, that if I got a bigger studio, my work would be bigger. Um, it's partly due to the fact that I paint in one sitting, and I really can only paint for, and I paint at night, so maybe I'll start at 9 o'clock and I'll f finish at about 3, 4 is when I start thinking I really have to start finishing up. But also, I feel like these are really generally pretty big spaces, especially these more extreme horizontal ones. So I like the intimacy that you get, or the, that contrast between a large space and the intimacy. So that's really more what it's about. Farther away, people sometimes think they look photographic, which always surprises me because they're, to me, they're painted very, you know, they are painted quite quickly, that's the other thing about the time limit. And I like the way that the paint goes on when I'm really in a groove and moving fairly fast. But, um, but also then to me it pays off a lot more than when you walk up a little bit closer and you see, see all those you know, rough strokes and how all those marks just kind of come together to represent something that's a really, really familiar scene. I mean, it's, it's interesting how little you need to put to represent a car or you know, an intersection or whatnot. There's very few dabs of paint that you need to put down in order for it to be a car at an intersection. There's something about these scenes at night, these kinds of inky, dark scenes that are both sort of looking at the, if you're out there in the world and on the highway and you're looking to find your way and you see these little dense spots of lights, you know that that's somewhere that you can go to maybe gas up or get a coffee or get directions or something like that. But at the same time, there's this, for me, a, a balance of, um, that fear of being on the road at night. Um, what if I break down, especially the more desolate kind of ones. 